Hello and welcome to today's video where I will teach you how to use a sensor in your mobile phone, a accelerometer, to shake your mobile phone and change the background color. So it's going to be a fun app to build and I'm sure you will enjoy it. And for this, let's go to Android Studio and I will show you exactly how the application looks like. This is what the end result should look like. You have a very simple user interface with a text view with some information. You have the movement of the device on the X, Y, and Z axis. And then you have the acceleration that will be calculated. So when you move your device, you can see all these values are changing. But if you shake your device, okay, a bit more, then you have a color change on your background. So this is what we'll build today. But until we get to this point, we'll take it step by step. I'll walk you through all the functions and how to build it. So bear with me, be patient and learn because the result, I think it's worth it. You will start by opening Android Studio and you will create a new project for phones and tablets. It will be an empty activity project. And after it has loaded completely, you will go to the activity main XML file where we will work on the user interface of our application. You should see by default this text view, hello world. I will increase the size a bit so you can see it better. So we will use this text view. However, we will change its ID. It will be text view from now on. It's only one, so we don't need to give it a different name. As for text, it doesn't really matter because we will change it anyway. So I gave it some content for now, but this will be updated as soon as the application starts. And basically that's all we have to do. We can move now to the main activity, Java file. And here we will start by implementing the sensor event listener. And for this, we say implements sensor event listener. You will see we get this underlining with red. So you have to click on this. You will find a little red light bulb. You click on the arrow and you select implement methods because there are two methods on sensor changed and on accuracy changed, which have to be implemented if we implement this sensor event listener. Now you can see the onCreate method and the other two for the event listener. However, there is one more thing we have to add over here. You right click, you go to generate and you want to override a method. And this will be the on stop method because when you register a sensor just before you close the application just before the application gets destroyed you want to stop or deregister that sensor okay so this is the framework of our application we can start and add some variables We have the text view for displaying the sensor information, the sensor manager for accessing sensor service. Then my sensor, this will reference the accelerometer that we use to calculate the device movement and two variables for keeping track of time. This is last update and actual time because we want to compare the time in each of them. So we don't change the colors too often. And there's always a certain time span, a certain delay between color changes. With this prepared, we can go inside the onCreate method and we'll write So I've finished writing the onCreate method. And what you see here is referencing the text view. So the association with the control in the user interface, then we set for the first time the background color. And I've used this method, get random color, which is written in red because it's not yet defined. We will do it in a moment. So this will generate every time you call it a different color, a random color. So 
the background will always be different. Then we write the time when we assign these new colors to the text view, because we always want to have something new and we want to know when we assigned that color. Then the sensor manager that calls sensor service, we have our sensor, which will be the type accelerometer and because we don't know for sure if this sensor is available in the mobile device that will run this application, we just check if the sensor is null. This means that the application, uh, the mobile phone doesn't have that sensor. So the application will display a toast message saying in this context that there is no accelerometer detected in the device. It will display this message for about four seconds and the user will be notified. I've actually forgot to say finish over here because we want to stop the execution of the program. We don't want to go any further if there is no sensor available. If, however, there is a sensor, so this is not null, then the sensor manager will register a listener, and this will be the listener. This is the sensor, and this is the sampling, the sensor delay normal. Okay, so with this being said, I think we should go and write this get random color method. I'll put it here on top. So as you can see from Java utility, we take this. Okay, let me import it again. Oh, actually, it did get imported. Sometimes my Android Studio is a bit lagging, so I should upgrade my computer, I guess. Okay, so importing all the necessary classes. Now you have a random number, and for RGB, you know, for red, green, blue, you get a random color every single time, and then you return this color. And over here, you will use it to, where is it? This place, you use it to assign a new color to the background of the text view. I just realized that the text view, in order for us to change the entire screen, so we have to go over here and make it match the constraints, both horizontal and vertical. And in order for us to have the information displayed in the middle, I will search for gravity and I will change the gravity to center. Here we are. Okay, I can save everything. Now the values will be displayed in the center. And because the text view covers the entire size of the screen, when I change the color, the background of the text view, the entire background color of the screen will be changed. Now we should go inside the on stop over here, and we want to deregister the sensor just to get the basics covered. So we say unregister listener, and this will be the listener. But this time we have the basics covered, we get the sensor, we check if it's available, we prepare to unregister it in case we stop the application, and of course, we initialize the text view with a color. Now comes the tricky part, doing something with the information from the sensor. So for this, we'll start and we'll write the code here inside on sensor change. But because we have many sensors and we have the possibility to have different sensors changing and probably our application will not use only this accelerometer, maybe it will use many sensors, we have to see which sensor has changed value. So we say event sensor get type. And this should be equal to sensor dot. And we say type accelerometer. And in case this is the one changing values, this is what we'll do. With the method being already completed, let me explain what I've done. So we start with this on sensor change method, which passes an event. And we check to see which sensor is the one that has changed. And in our case, we have only this accelerometer. So if this has changed, then what we do, we take the values from the sensor 
and for x, y, z, the three axes of movement, left and right, up and down, and towards or away from the user, we take the values at zero position, first position, and the second position. Now, these values are very important because they will allow us to calculate if the device has moved. But for this, we also need the Earth's gravity. And this is a constant. And you can look in sensor manager dot gravity Earth. And the value of this constant is 9.8066. But you don't need to know it because it's already saved over here. You calculate the device acceleration with this formula, which is x squared plus uh, y squared z squared divided by Earth's gravity squared. This formula I didn't make up. I uh, searched online and I found this formula to be the one that you can use to calculate the device acceleration. So I've used it. And after I have all my values, the device acceleration and the values of the movement uh, in the device on each axis, I update them in the text view. So I just say x and I take the value and I do the same for all the other values. Of course, I get this uh, highlighting saying that I should use resources, string resources with placeholders, but in order to keep everything simple, I just wrote it like this. Then I move to this part where I check to see if the device has been shaken, because if you move your device in a gentle way, then this uh, device acceleration will have a small value. I've done a bit of trial and error, and I've seen that a value around one is what you normally get. A value of two, you really have to shake the device to reach it. So 1.5, this I found to be a good value for us to shake the device, not too much, but not uh, insignificant. So this will be the one that we use. So when we move the device and we get this acceleration, then there are several things which we have to handle. First, we need to take the system time because this is the moment we shake the device. We save it in, inside this variable actual time. Then we check the actual time and the last time we have changed the color of the text view. And if it has passed more than one second, this is 1000 milliseconds or one second. So if it's more than one second since the last time we changed colors, then we update the last time we changed the color of the text view to become right now. And right now we also change the background color of the text view. So this is all that we have to do. We can save everything. And let's run the application to see how it behaves. I select my preferred virtual device. I click run. You can see the application has now loaded. So let's see if we can shake it. And for this, you go to these three dots where it says extended controls. You click on virtual sensors. And then you go to device position. And then you can just grab the device and you can move it. Okay, let's see if we can just move the device. Actually, we need to rotate it back. Okay, let's put it back in the upright position. I think that this should be fine. And now we can just shake it. Okay, let's shake it harder. So this is the way you can shake the device and change the color of your background. I hope you have learned something new today. Until we meet in the next videos, keep learning, keep practicing, check the other videos available on this educational channel, and take care. See you next time.